Hey, Legends, what an episode we have for you today. We are joined by Melbourne footy star Clayton Oliver. We are back with a bang. Clayton's rise in the AFL is something we speak about, his incredible journey. He's been there for almost 10 years. He's had six seasons where he's averaged 30 touches, four-time All-Australian and won three best and fairest. It was such an incredible episode. We go through how he prepares for footy on the weekend, the mateship he has with Max Gorn. He talks about the culture of the Melbourne Footy Club and how he sees it in a different light to what's portrayed in the media. Also, we speak on the Christian Petrarca incident this year. And obviously, in hindsight, we go back on the 2021 Grand Final and what an incredible year that was to win his first flag with the Melbourne Footy Club. This episode had it all, guys. Let's get into it. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of the Unlaced Podcast. As I always say, if you are new here, thank you for turning up. If you've come back again, I absolutely love you. If you are tuning in on Spotify, I'm going to pause you there, guys. Please, if you are a listener of this show, give us five stars on our ratings and reviews. We're trying to bump those numbers up. It helps with the Spotify algorithms. And if you're feeling friendly, I'll always appreciate it. And if you are on YouTube, just hit that sub button, baby. And the notification bell, you know, when we have a new episode like today, which is absolutely going to be awesome because this man doesn't do much, much media, but I tell you what, watching him on a footy field on his days, uh, definitely heroic. He's a, he's a guy that performs really well under scrutiny. He's a guy that just performs well in general and he's an absolute ripping fella off the field. And hopefully we get to show you some of uh, his personality and what he stands for today. But, mate, I'm very happy to have Clayton Oliver in the room. No, thank you. Thanks for having me. Mate, pleasure. Pleasure. You, mate, you had a short short end to the season or I guess a, a quick end to the season in regards to there's a few things going on, but hand surgery was the one that I, I'd i seen. So ha- was that something you, you had for a long part of the season? Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> played rounds, played the first few games with it and then just in the, the week before the, uh, the gather round for the Adelaide game of training, I just had a little yeah, incident training and had a crack in there and like one of them somewhere in there in my hand and it was a bit frustrating and played two games with it against um, Port and Adelaide and then um, yeah, had surgery before the Richmond game was yeah, it's a bit of an annoying injury. Yeah, definitely. Is it it's something that like people don't really talk about too much, but it's quite common to have some sort of niggle in you um, throughout the whole season where yeah. you've just got to like kind of push through or you can play. Yeah, a lot of a lot of boys have something going on. Yeah. Um, you don't really find out too much because yeah, you probably don't go too going to pretty much any game feeling 100%. Um, yeah, there's a lot of boys carrying something and it's just sort of something I have to deal with for, for most of the year. Yeah. Do you get um, – always – when when you were coming in, there's a few, few – stati- mate, I did my stats on you because your, your stats are unbelievable. Like if we go through yours from a, from a career standpoint from when, mm. from when you've ended. But one thing I always wonder with you is like actually how you're going because I, I actually always um, always wish, wish care for you from a distance and always want you to do well and I think you've done extremely well for – for the long part of your career and, and, and even even throughout this year with, with sort of the scrutiny around the club, you, you sort of performed really well and obviously injuries were, were with you as well. But how, how are things going, mate? How, how, how have you been? Um, yeah, obviously last year was a, had a fair bit going on. Um, yeah, done my hammy and then sort of the wheels for you fell off a little bit. Um, yeah. But no, I'm going pretty well now. Um, yeah, a few things on the last – in the off season. Obviously had a month off um, after Christmas um, yeah. this year and, yeah, sort of – Got a few things in place and sort of sorted myself out, and I came back and um, had a few good w- weeks training and had a much solid month. And yeah, I was probably lucky enough to play round one. Um, probably wasn't the best c- c- circumstances. Um, yeah, Gussie Brayshaw, um, obviously retired. Yeah, ha- from, have you spoke to him lately? Is he doing yeah, all right? He's uh, he spoke very well at the Brownlow. Yeah, on Monday night, um, it was pretty. Yeah, I think everyone's pretty emotional. Um, Sort of just a quick sort of cut short, and it wasn't from his decision. Mm. Um, was sort of taken out of his hands, which is probably the hardest part for him to deal with. But yeah, he's had a he was um, sort of yeah he was sort of there, and then the next one he wasn't, and it would have been very hard for him. And yeah, he was. He took took off to uh, Europe for yeah. two or three months, and yeah, he's sort of yeah most of the boys have been remaining in contact with him. Yeah, um, but it's obviously been very difficult for him, and hopefully he comes back to the club in some form and. He's just such a he's such a big um, character and he left such a big void in our in our room and especially especially on the field but yeah on, on, in the room as well. Is he older than you? He's a year older than me. So he's been uh, he was at the club from your whole time that you've been at the club. Yeah, he's no, number ten as well. So he's yeah. literally two lockers down, and I lived with him my first year. Damn. Yeah, live with him, uh, Mark and Deb. <laughs> so now we're very close. Uh, always have been. Actually, live with him. In, I moved into Aaron Vandenberg's house, and sorry, Jack Trengrove's house with Aaron Vandenberg and, and Gussie. So yeah. I lived with him for the best part of two or three years, and um, yeah, very close. And 
It's probably literally my big brother. I think he's a lot of a lot of the boys' big brothers. Yeah. Um, just the way he goes about it and looks after everyone, and he, he's such a good leader. And yeah. It might be too soon for to to come back in in his eyes, but do you think do you think he sees himself in sort of some sort of footy capacity uh, going forward, or do you reckon it's a space like I can imagine as well? It's just you want to do something different, right? Like yeah, experience something new. He's probably the he's probably the person that's the most well well equipped off the field. Right. He's um he's done double degree in, in his commerce and something else. He's, yeah. he's, he's a bloody so he's smart boy. Yeah. And he set up his own set up his own wine room. Lenny's Lenny's on that. Uh, <laughs> Lennox, so if you want to get down there, have yeah, a few rounds, like, help out Gussie, yeah, say hello to him. Go on, guys. Yeah. yeah no, nah, it's a beautiful little place. Um, he's doing very well there. Um, so, yeah, it's what well, I don't really know what the goal is with all that, but it would be nice to have him back. But I think it would be pretty hard just for him. Um, just, yeah, just with the being a taken bit. Just the fact that he was taking out his own hands. Yeah, that I mean, fuck, it's starting to happen a bit more and more now, isn't it? Especially with the head injuries. We actually spoke to um Brody Holland on here and we were talking about like how the concussion sort of all changed games and I wouldn't say the games got softer by any stretch, but it's gotten smarter because of yeah. like it has to. And he was talking about fuck, we pulled up this clip how he cleaned up. What was the guy's name again, Braden? Brett Montgomery. Montgomery? Brett, I've seen mate. That. That's ridiculous. Yeah, he's like the guy came back on and kicked four. And, yeah. like, he had the handlebars after two minutes in the game, and it was just like, yeah, that wouldn't happen now. No, it's crazy. Yeah, so it's it's changed a lot. But just to your sentiment to um, Gus in regards to his career and, and obviously when he came in, you've actually been in the league now almost 10 years, which that to me is fucking mind-blowing because I'm like, that's that's either gone really quick or you're now all of a sudden a senior player when I think because you were playing so well from, like, year one and year two. Mm that you've always kind of felt like you've been sort of, you know, part of the fabric for a long time. But yeah, have you realised that? Like 10-year 10 year, 10 year vet <laughs> almost um, now? Yeah, sort of seven or eight was like a couple of years ago in the last probably 2023 and 2024. Have gone pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, yeah, after we lost to Brisbane in, in 2022 and that, that year and then the next two years have sort of gone pretty quick, probably years eight and nine. Now I come to year 10, it's, um, yeah, it's they always say it goes really quick and it's probably not until you – <laughs> it happens yeah. to you. Like, like shit, yeah, it's, just, it's actually flown. I, yeah. found, I just find it. I found it hard to believe because you, you're such a knockabout bloke. But I, I didn't realize. Man, maybe my life's gone quick too. But I'm like, fuck, Clayton Oliver's been in the league for him. like ten. I think this is year ten coming this year. Yeah, going year ten. Yeah, yeah. So that's crazy to me. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I, still, I don't feel that old. I think I'm, I, I need to mature. I need to grow up a little bit. Because <laughs> oh, yeah, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> but we don't we don't sort of uh, throw stones here because we live in glass houses as well <laughs> as the host of this show. But yeah. um, one thing you've one thing you've done extremely well, which um, as an athlete I really admire, is deal with sort of noise around your name, good, bad, and indifferent, from like day dot to now. But you've always managed to play well, or at least find a find a gear to play well. I mean, without sort of going into the noise that comes comes with the name, just like focusing on the actual job at hand with with that. Mm. What what is something that you've like? What's what's sort of been that within inside you to be able to a be able to do that? But is there any sort of people you've lent on? Is that your upbringing? Like what what has that been? That's sort of been able to fight off that and play well. Um, I don't know. I've just sort of probably always been like that. But um, my first year. I've Played first 10, 10, 12 games and I got dropped for one or two and and then I missed a couple and then I think I played the last three or something. I remember I got dropped for the last game of the year and I was just filthy about it. <laughs> no, like, really? Ruzi dropped me for you it. You won. Yeah. Like that, I think the boys aren't losing by 109 um, against Geelong. I got dropped for it. I was still filthy about it. And I played the VFL finals and- you still filthy to this day, man? Yeah, I'm still filthy about it. <laughs> I, played, I, played, I played all right again. <laughs> I played all right against um against Carlton. If I think I hit a couple of goals and I think I played all right, but I obviously didn't run defensively at all. I just, right, I let Cripper and Mur and who were the other boys? I think it was Murphy. <laughs> they probably had about forty on me. <laughs> okay, and, yeah. uh, and we lost. But um, yeah, I um was just I was still pretty filthy about that, and I just remember that the whole off season I was just trying to get fit and mm. knew, knew what I needed to work on. And then I came back day one, and um, Brendan McCartney sat me down and was just like, "Oh mate, look, like you know, if you want to be." An AFL football, you got to be like professional, this and that. And I was pretty fat back then, which I'm a bit fat right now. <laughs> <laughs> You've had what, six weeks off though, almost yeah, now, haven't I you? Need, I need to get back into it. But um, he said you need to get more professional and um, start looking, looking after yourself more. So he sat me down with a bloke called Billy Stretch, who was in um, uh, Gussie Brayshaw's and Tracks Draft, and he was just the most professional person ever. Like, just yeah, everything. So everything he did for the whole preseason. Just sat in his back pocket for the the whole time and wow yeah it was, it was incredible everything pretty much everything he ate and 
eye, everything the same, all the training things off the track. He was just, man, just always doing like these little extra things, one percenters, before yeah. train, after train, and I mean, all, at all times. So I did that and I think it helped me in pretty good stead. Sort of, you sort of get a little bit, we probably got a little bit of addictive personality. I sort of probably got addicted to feeling that and it feels so good when you train and then you start yeah. playing well and it sort of just keeps rolling over into another thing. So um, yeah, that was, that was going to my second year. I had a pretty good second year. I yeah. sort, of just kept, sort of just kept doing that and sort of out of my own things that made me feel better and yeah, probably got a little bit out of control. Probably doing too much. There a few <laughs> yeah, well, times. this is what I feel. I honestly, bro, I'm the exact same. One, I've got an addictive personality. Mm. So obviously, when I harnessed it with good stuff, it was fucking great. When yeah. I harnessed it with bad stuff, well, you know, the the world's not my oyster as such. But yeah. with that, like with my training, that was why I always put myself above other people because I would always do more than them. Mm. But the level of training that I would do was probably to a point where it's like, do I need to do X, Y, Z at this point? I've done A, B, C, D. Yeah. But I just can't, I didn't know how to filter that have you like 10 years on now because I've, I've heard about you on the track you you're kind of one of the guys that when you get going yeah it's good luck yeah. good luck Irene in, in some regards to yeah. what you're doing have you got any any better at managing that because we're already talking about you going on a run post this so yeah um, um nah not really I probably this year probably didn't have the the uh, the year I wanted to have probably a few different things but the more I did probably the less I, the probably the worse I played in a sense. I was coming up. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I kept on doing more and more, and I was probably getting too tired. And then I was, yeah, yeah probably to the point where I just my body wasn't handling it all because I hadn't done the work I, in the preseason or the off season that I, yeah, obviously wanted to do. So um, it's probably reflect, reflecting on that. And but I do need work on now. I probably am getting old, as you said, ten years in the league now. So yeah. Um, well, Tommy Mitchell, like he's what is he 31, 30, He, he does. Like, Geordie was telling me, I like, kind of laughs at him in a way because he's, like, always stretching. He's doing touch against the wall. I'm like, Tommy, you've had 54 in the MCG. Like, handball and five metres away from a wall. That might not change your game, but for his brain, yeah. like, it's it's just ticking a box off so that he goes into a game with, like, the clarity of, like, you know, I've done what I need to do. Yeah. Even though it doesn't need to be done from the outside. Yeah. You, does, does that, like, resonate with you yeah. at all a little bit? Yeah, yeah. massively. I, I know <laughs> a few boys are like that, but I've got to – it's sort of like a, a checklist sort of thing that I like doing throughout the whole week and on my day off, always make sure I do the same things every can, week. Can you give us some insight on that, like what oh, that checklist is? No. Nah, or is that going to make make you sound even more crazy to yeah, us? Yeah, probably <laughs> crazy, probably. <laughs> nah, I just, we, I, well, so I just changed, at the start of each, like, pre-season, I'll probably do a few things and then, like, at the start of each year, I'll just, like, troll a few things for the practice games. Yeah. And, yeah, it's usually most the same thing, but I like to go for a walk in the morning. It's, like, the main one. Yeah. You know, just, like, go for a stretch. Yeah. Foam roll, and then if I, I go and see a guy called um, Chris in you know, the one one two movement stuff. Oh, He's, mate, I actually wanted to bring him up because I want to give his brand. A, yeah, a, give it a massive yeah. shout out. Yeah, well, how, it's one one two movement. One one two movement. Yeah, but I went there probably just as he started up, and he yeah. was hanging off like monkey bars, like yeah. swinging around. He had yeah. the ice bath, and I was like, it kind of you know what he reminded me of. I don't know if you know UFC, but remember when Conor McGregor was training this guy Ido Portal. It was like a flexibility coach. Yeah. And um, it was around the Nate Diaz fights. Nate Diaz, like, oh, go, go do your butt touch in the park with your, you know, like kind of giving him shit. Mm. But I seen a lot of sense. I saw a lot of sense to what he was doing. Like the day cost boys go see this guy. Jamara's seen him. Yeah. You're seeing him. Yeah. And yeah, it's like, I can't explain. Can you explain to the listeners the type of training and the met- methodology that, it, that he's doing? Because it is so different to anything in the state. Yeah. It's, um, it's incredible. I love it. Um, it's sort of like the... End of, um, I don't know what it's called, like the the like the like end of your stretch or the, I don't even know, he calls it something. I actually can't remember. Yeah, he's a, scient- he's a scientist in his own yeah, way. Yeah, he's smart. It's like the like the end range end range strength. Right. Like, yeah, you're like every muscle and like, so you don't really realise that you use it at all, but it sort of like makes you sort of like bulletproof and looks after your muscles and also makes you so much stronger. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like you're doing a range of stretches, but you're holding them and you realise how even as a professional athlete, you realize how, like, you don't have much flexibility because yeah. of, of his stretches. Like, you do yeah. a normal hamstring stretch, yeah. yeah. You can touch my toes and this and that. Yeah. But with him, it's like, man, my back is going to break if I stay here for longer. Then you go back after a month and all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, the, it's insane. Yeah, he's got, and he's big on the um, he's big on the cold cold sort of water, or ice baths yeah, as well, isn't it. he? He's got a, I think he's got a, I haven't been there yet, but I think he's got the, the freezer out the back. Um, yeah. oh, I think it's too cold for me. I've been in one, but <laughs> way too cold for me, yeah. Yeah. He's no, got the sauna, sauna there as well. Oh, we'll give him a shout out. Does he take people off the street? Plug Absolutely. his Absolutely. Yeah, mate. Yeah. One on two movement, get into him. Chris Blair, he's a ripping fellow. If you, if you actually want to, you know, 
have some flexibility, it's particularly as you get older. Like it's invaluable. Mm. Yeah. David Goggins as much as he's a bit of we get a bit of David Goggins yeah. about us. Yeah. He's um he's massive on stretching. Is he? Yeah, no. because I I think as you get older you you don't want to no, like not be able to play with your kids or go for be able to go do some you know, normal activities and stretching gets such a pivotal pivotal part of that. Yeah. Um well, we're getting to this season because I know everyone wants to talk about the year that's been, but um, just a couple of things I wanted just to mention with Clary because it's, it's quite incredible. You're 27. 27. Yeah. So for six of your nine seasons, you've averaged 30 touches, which is – that's that's fucked. Let's just be, <laughs> that's, it, that's super impressive, right? You've had four BNFs and three All-Australians as well. So I always just think with that, I'm like – I feel like people need to embrace you a bit more because I'm like, look what look what the guy's actually doing. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? There, there's two ways to look at you, but that that in itself, I mean, probably doesn't mean much to you now. Um, but at the same time, it must just be kind of pretty cool to know what you've been able to achieve at such a young age. And realistically, like you're still at a prime age for your footy career and can can really go on as long as you want. Yeah. Um, probably the last years haven't been ideal for me. 22 yeah. throws all right to about round 11, I think, and then... Is that well, just because you've had your sort of... Your, your head's been elsewhere or your body hasn't been sort of nah, given oh, to you? Yeah, my hammy... Well, probably the first real injury I've ever had was my hamstring in, in yeah, last year, 2023. Yeah, and, did, um, didn't that get the microscope around it as well, like... Yeah, the whole thing was a bit frustrating. Yeah, like people yeah. were obsessed with... I don't know. It, what, why is that? People... I don't know. <laughs> I felt like I was just... Every, yeah, it was weird. It was, everything was just... There was nothing else to talk about besides my hamstring. Yeah, I know. Like, fuck me. Talk about yeah. everything else. <laughs> yeah, he's limping down the street. Oh. See it. Yeah. 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 No, that, that's tough, man. Hamstrings are... It's also like building the confidence to have it come back and yeah. do the do the natural stuff. I just tore my tendon at the start of the year. Yeah, yeah, which Bad. mate, I was five centimeters, but it was more the. Fi- I played the first soccer game last week, and I my mates watching me was like, "What the fuck was that?" I go, "Mate, all I could think about was the two gunshots I felt when I tried to like full flex, you know, and yeah. have a have a shot." I'm exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, and it just like it it still plays on my mind as well because I'm like that that pain is it's not even a pain. It was just like just that feeling of yeah. Mm. So it actually felt like two gunshots, like ping, ping in, my, in the back of my leg. Yeah, I had that too. When I was coming back from my, about four weeks, I think I was coming back from my last session. I had a, a run through and yeah, I was, I hadn't re- I had the first one I had wasn't that bad against Puerto Lale, and, and then I sort of done again in training and then the third one, yeah, had the same thing as gunshot. Just, yeah, it's yeah. Just fucking awful, isn't it? Yeah, it's a terrible feeling. Terrible feeling. More mental than anything by the when you sort of come back from That's it. a great point. Yeah, it is. It's that mental aspect. That is that when you got back from that, what was it? Is it about getting a, a whole load of work in or is it just about, you know, once you, once you do all the movements, then you trust yourself? Um, so probably when I came back from that in 2023, 20, I still wasn't great. And then I, the first game I came back, I had got a scan on my knee and my knee was no good either. So I ended up getting knee surgery. Damn. So I couldn't even run anyway. So it probably didn't uh, affect me too much last year. But this year, it was still it was sort of pop up and just the back of my mind, I didn't want to do it. And, I don't know, just another four, four to six weeks sort of come back from that. Yeah. It's always sort of there. Just You can always feel a little bit or just something goes and you worry yeah. about it. And Yeah, it's such, a, it's such a mental battle to come back from injuries. No, it definitely is. Can, it, can you take me into the, to the mind? I, I kind of asked Tommy Mitchell this a, a little bit, and this is probably more for the kids at home, but like reeling off the stats there, averaging 30 touches for six seasons and probably the, the seasons you haven't, you haven't been too far off it either, right? So um, – I just kind of summarised it, but in regards to being consistent and getting that much footy and, and obviously through a big chunk of that, through your whole career, you've always had people on the opposition worrying about where you're going as well. Mm. What What is it that you do from like a mental standpoint or even just movements and little things like that to always be around every contest to be able to access that much footy and, and get that much footy? Um, you have tips and tricks around that or is, you know, because... Yeah. Feel, feel my mates always talk about how lucky I am. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think really? sometimes, oh, sometimes it's a bit of luck. Like, I don't know. Um, at a, yeah, at a stoppage and at, at like a, um, yeah, that's probably my greatest strength. Like Tommy, Tommy Mitchell, Lockie Neal and Dacos now, you sort of look at those boys and hmm. the main thing is just being on the move all the time. Like, right. and sort of watching the ball and just that, the first, first two or three steps could be real sharp and. Yeah. Yeah, just make sure you clean as like every time I get the footy, like I don't want ever want to fumble it because you only get the only have a chance maybe like say you have twenty or thirty chances or thirty or forty, you don't want to 
stuff out, stuff out of Thirty up. or forty, yeah. yeah. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you, might, you might have forty times a game where you can get the footy, but then you fumble like ten of them. So then you have right. You got to be clean. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just around the stoppages, always always make sure in the move. Like that's the biggest one. Like mm. on the front of your feet. Like you never want to be flat footed. Yeah. Unless you unless you're Cripper and you're having forty five votes. <laughs> I know. That man's just too big. He's I a man know. he's uh, a man mountain. Mate, but Lucky Neil apparently was gonna maybe win his third and he, he lost by twenty three votes. Incredible. <laughs> isn't it? Which is, uh, it's incredible. Yeah, I've, I've I've never seen anything like it. I don't know if we'll ever see that again. Don't think so. Uh, yeah. I think forty five. Yeah. Even thirty eight. What do you think around that? They're talking about giving the umpires, um, and this is obviously shot before the AFL Grand Final, folks. So when this comes out, obviously we'll know who's won. Mm. But they're talking about giving the stat sheets to the umpire, which I just think is an absolute no brainer. I think it's a no brainer because if well, like, like in soccer, they're going to see who scores. Yeah, just like the goal. yeah, make it harder for them. Yeah, do you know like, what I mean? I don't, yeah, it doesn't matter. Officiate a game, let alone figure out who the best player is. Yeah, like you sort of go off the last quarter. Like, oh, who had a good last quarter? But most of the time, like the games could be over or well, yeah, you've had the be- you go to the bench or you just. You, you put in autopilot for the last quarter, so it'd be so hard. Yeah. I, I don't really understand why you wouldn't just give them, a, give them the stats and just look, give them a little bit of help. Yeah. I know it doesn't mean everything, but it'd be like if you're 50-50 between like a – Bang. Yeah, he's made – he had 10 in the last quarter. Oh, I didn't even realise yeah. that. I was too busy worrying about – there was a scrap over there. Yeah. That, do you know what I mean? Oh, L- yeah. Little things like that. Mm. Yeah. So you're actually uh, – are you Golden Valley? Golden Valley, yeah. Yeah, Golden Valley. Can you just tell me what – what it's like out there. Like, right, love it. I'm actually a Chuk. Oh, a Chuk, a Chuk, yeah, Chuk is Gone Valley. Yeah. Um, Chuk is Shepparton. So I went to school over at um, Gone Valley Grammar. And right. And then I grew up in a Chuka and most of my mates live in Marupna. So, yeah, a bit of all three around there. But is, that, is that like, I feel like it's it's got an element of metropolitan around there, though, in regards to like it's it's country, but like there's still quite a lot of people. There's yeah, a large sure. population. It's it's yeah. not like they're, you know, in the middle of nowhere as such. No. Nah. There's a big going on out there, but it still would have been a change up coming here. Yeah. But what, what was your upbringing like in regards to, I mean, being out there? You must have had other interests that, like farm life, who knows what else. No, nah, I, you... I wish I lived on a farm. It would be, it would be <laughs> sick. I love the farm. Yeah. So, um, no, I wasn't. Uh, unfortunately, I was in a chuka um, with mum and dad just to work on a little bit of land, not too much land, like just a a bigger place just out near the race course in Chuka, so it was, it was pretty uh, pretty cool out there, but it wasn't too much, it wasn't too different. It's probably just the, the traffic, getting used to the traffic in Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah. all the people. I don't, I'm not really good too with with big clusters of people. Yeah, well, I, ne- neither am I, but I can imagine you even more so. Mm. Like, uh, you know, you're don't, not used to it, and if you are, the people you know. Yeah. Like back back in those areas as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just probably just a lot of people and just a fair bit too much, too just a lot going on. Do you love going back to every chance you get? I yeah. mean, you, we spoke the other week. You were down there for a couple of days or at least a week or so. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I've gone, been going back there heaps lately. Just um, catch up with family. I didn't get back there last year too much because to my license because oh, um, yeah. I had the seizure, so I lost my license for six months. Wow, it was a bit annoying. Um, so that's just been good going back there, seeing everyone, and yeah, literally just been spending as much time as I can because once you're in season or pre season, you you're pretty regimented and locked into yeah. Doing your own thing, it's it's pretty selfish, and um, yeah, the, sort of the weeks roll into others, and then all of a sudden you haven't seen anyone for six, <laughs> eight weeks. And you're ten yeah. years into your career, yeah, mate. literally <laughs> you're ten years into your career, you haven't you look back, you haven't seen too many people or done too much besides train and sort of get the best out of yourself, and um, yeah, so when you when you do have the time, you sort of you make the most of that, and you sort of yeah. Once I'm off, I'm off, and I'm I'm doing that with. Friends and family, but once I'm on, I'm probably you wouldn't hear, you won't hear from me for yeah two months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the best part of that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe probably three or four months. <laughs> <laughs> well, where did where did your connection to footy come from? Like, how did that originate? Obviously, it's quite a prob- probably a probably popular footy town as such. But for you, I mean, how did that sort of footy journey start? And I guess were you always the kind of Clayton Oliver that came into the AFL? You were obviously a high draft pick, but. Were you always that elite footballer coming in or was that something that, you know, you played as a bit of fun and then you, you gradually got better at? Um, when I was, like, real young. like Yeah, I mean, early doors, just that connection. But yeah. then I guess probably build on, when did you know this is what you want to do as well? Yeah, under uh, like under 10s, under 12s, I was always, yeah, pretty handy and did the Vic under 12 squad. I actually did it, the, I did a bod major year with, with um, track. Um, oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. I was, Few boys in there. Um, like, the, is that the primary schools team, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I love looking back on those photos yeah, to see. It's crazy. Yeah, some of, the, some of the boys in there. There's heaps of. I can't, I'm having a blank at the moment. But there's heaps of boys in that team. Um, and then the top age you did, did as well. Um, Darcy Parrish was in that team. Um, Nico. Oh, he was our captain. 
he, he got drafted to to Saints, but there's so many boys. I'm just having a bit blank at the moment. Yeah, mate. I no. Nah, there's been a few few people that have spoken to us about that primary school. I just think it's in, it's impressive one to be kind of good at that age, but then to maintain it and get drafted. Like you went, you go pick four. Yeah, pick four. So when you were coming in that sort of draft year. Was that always on the cards for you? I mean, nah. could you only sort of fuck that up in a sense? As, nah, as a, I was no chance. This, this is what I, this is what fascinates me. Everyone, yeah. a lot of people who go top like a high draft pick, like Jamara was told me no. Jordan Dugowie told me n- wasn't yeah. even like wasn't even having a conversation. Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah, Jordan. Yeah, Jordan was the same as me. He was a year before me. Yeah, he was like, man, he just had a good carnival yeah. or like a good good final period for the Oakley Chargers, and then like bang, pick six. Yeah, yeah. But how did that sort of story like mold for you then? Um, so start of the year, I was, I was the year before I was at Pioneers and <clears throat> with the, the, like the rep side and then, uh, mum and dad, uh, we're trying to, I was trying to get the Bush Rangers over in the Bush Rangers squad because the coach over there liked me a bit more. So I'd get, a, I'd get a game. So mum and dad sort of moved the, our rental over to, um, I got a rental in Marupna. So we started living there for the year just so I could qualify for the, um, the Bush Rangers. Yeah. Like, parents were even on board. Yeah, that. parents were a big time. <laughs> that's yeah, it, that's yeah huge. that was huge by them. So, shout out. Grand, grandparents, yeah, very grateful, driving me everywhere. Um, yeah, so I got, got a gig over the Bush Rangers, and Darren Ogio, the coach there, loved me. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, just loved me. And then, yeah, got, got in there and I came pre day one preseason, came back. I was like fit as, and then got OP, osteoarthritis pubes. Oh, do you, you see that's still around? People, people. Let's talk about that. Like that's not a real thing, but I'm telling you, when you have it, yeah. Oh, and they changed changed how I move for yeah, a long time. Yeah, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, they oh. can't really describe it to people too. Nah, they think weird. you're talking shit. Yeah, and it's like, mate, I, I generally like there's something, there's a rock inside, like yeah, how bad yeah, is it? Yeah, I've, I have had it a number of times. Yeah. So people, when I was at the AAS, a guy had it for 18 months. It's like one of the worst cases they'd ever seen. Yeah, I, was, I had it for eight, off and on for ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. But Chris is that's Chris is real good for. Yeah, he'd be a prime guy for that. Yeah. Just bring it back, mate. Yeah. We should have had him on. Yeah, we should have. <laughs> <laughs> He's, um, all his stuff for like your, yeah, your in range strength and all that's just really good for strength. Core and, strength, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I had OP and then. So you had OP in your draft year? In well, like November, December. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and then I didn't train all the way until the first game. It was a week before the first game. This is getting more heroic as it goes on. Oh, mate, I was <laughs> so <laughs> fat. You go on top five. so fat. And I couldn't do anything. And then this bloke called Pat Allen. He's like a – Yeah. Have you heard of him? The no. Gro- yeah, no. so he's a, some groin. He's like 80 – he's 87, 88 now. But he would have been 78 back then or 10 years ago. And um, Brandon Favola, Chris Jard, the Brown brothers. Um, it's heaps of boys. If you go, there's this room. It's just everyone who's got a – Who's done work from him? Just a photo. Oh, that's awesome. Or a sign message saying thank you. And like a Hall of Fame almost. In yeah, way. yeah. Sick. And I've given him a signed jumper and given him, here's all this stuff about me. I go there. And, uh, I still go there all the time. Yeah. And there probably every six to eight weeks. Yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, so I do that, and I went and seen him like literally a week before round one, and I don't know how he done his little thing. Like got there for about half an hour, and you literally walked like you ran out of there. Oh, you fi- he fixed it that quickly. That's for, yeah. You go there and like. Literally run out, and I literally trained that week, and it was the weirdest see, thing. It's because of people like him that people don't believe OP's real, because it's like, yeah, you go see him. I didn't believe it. Either. I was <laughs> yeah. like, what the hell is going on? Like, I haven't been out of run for like literally three, best part of three months. And now wow. You, yeah. You know what? I think I might have actually heard about this guy because someone tried to get me. Yeah, it's worth yeah, it. Yeah, rings a bell. Yeah, it's crazy. Rings a bell now. Yeah. And um, did that, and then played round one. Played pretty average the first like 10 games, but then all the Vic Country boys, um, Went for the carnival. Right, okay. And then it was just all like the rest of the, the shit kick is just more just. Was it, you're not in big country? No, nah, I didn't make it. Didn't get the call up. This is gets fire. Yeah, that, yeah. I didn't know that. Played the, uh, I think I played the, made the 40 man squad and then I didn't make the, the, the final 24, or whatever it was. And then I played all right after they, those boys went away. And then I, I think I, yeah, I played a pretty good end of the year. And um, skyrocketed up. Yeah, won the Morris medal for like the, um, been there for the, the league. Okay. Well, that's yeah. pretty big. So. Yeah, it's, weird, it's a weird thing because, like, all, like, most of the big country boys, they miss half a year and then they've got, like, the, all the private school boys missing half a year. So Okay. So there's a bit of a loophole. Yeah, a bit of a loophole. <laughs> I, I played 15 like... games. They probably played about six. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's not, it's not that good, but it's still pretty cool. Yeah, that's, a, that's something you look back on with, with pride. Yeah. But when you went into uh, Melbourne, I mean, one, did you know, did, was there anyone else on the table, any other suitors? 
Yeah. Did, did you always know you were going to Melbourne as such, even though there might have been other conversations, or were, was the actual like it could have been anywhere? No, nah, Essendon, Essendon called me up before the draft and said we're going to take you with pick five. Right. And then, yeah, so I thought it was going to go there. Um, and then Essendon, Essendon Melbourne had picked me up with pick four. Okay. But they bid on um, Callum Mills before – before me, so I've always, I've always reminded <laughs> about it and I'm still pretty filthy. Uh, from one redhead to another, <laughs> mate, mate. You never know. Yeah. yeah. So, who, had, who was one, two, and three in that draft? You know, the, or at uh, least the, the clubs as well. Just, Jake, Jacob Weider, he picked one. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Shaq, he picked two. And then Mills, three. Right. Mills, four. Parrish, five. Jeez, it's mm. a good draft, yeah, isn't it? Charlie well, Kerno, Harry Mackay. Wow. Yeah, that is a great draft. Mm. Yeah, yeah that. There's a there's a there's a kind of a thing around Essendon that the plays that they could have had. Yeah, yeah. I always think of that with St Kilda because I think we took I don't, I don't know who we took over Christian Petrarca, but Paddy McCartan. Yeah, Paddy McCartan. Oh, he's been pretty handy. Yeah, very but, handy. well, he's mate. Like, yeah, concussion, so it's pretty sad. Yeah, which well, looking back on it now, but yeah, the Billings one with Bont and Pally, that's the one that gets me. But he's now with you. Yeah, he, he's a superstar though, isn't he? Great man. I feel yeah. I kind of felt for him with that because there was always people comparing him to. Bond. Yeah. Which, I mean, how can, you never know when you're going to get a generational yeah. player coming in. Yeah, it's pretty hard. It's yeah. pretty hard. The recruiters do it. It's a pretty tough, pretty tough job. When you went into Melbourne, was it the Melbourne where it had that sort of five to six, seven year period where it was like almost like what North and West Coast have been in the past? Or were you guys coming out of that where, you know, Melbourne would just get smacked every week, which, yeah. which is a really tough period for a fan. And then you kind of fast forward now. It's like being one of the greatest times to be a fan of the footy club because the... You're starting 22 is elite. You've won a flag, all that sort of stuff. Mm. But was it was that the Melbourne back then when you walked in with Paul Roos? Uh, I think they got they just had Gussie, Brayshaw, and Track, and they were sort of like a little bit. There was hope building. There was hope. You could feel there was hope. Like it wasn't like a dire straits that like Gorney talks about. Like Gorney and Nathan Jones were there for yeah. Them, all those boys, um, Neville Jetta, they, they were in. Pretty bad way, like they're literally getting pumped. Like, yeah, it's like what, it was almost like the AFL had to intervene at some point yeah. just to like try and help them. But yeah, yeah, I think they lost by 186 to <laughs> Geelong at Cadinia Park, so it's an absolute pumping. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I was there for that. Gorney, Gorney tells a story how he missed both games. He was, he was the v, he was the emergency for the AFL game. Oh, the yeah. VFL boys lost by 110, and then the AFL boys lost by 186. So he said it was, it was a pretty grim day. Um, but yeah, I think I was sort of on the back of that. Um, cause 2016 we finished, we won, we won a few games, we weren't that great. And then 2017, I think we were ninth. So yeah. we literally by a percentage, um, with the West Coast and Adelaide played last game of the year and, and West Coast snuck in or, oh, it's beyond yeah. Good. And then 2018 we played finals and then 2019 we were, we finished 17th. I think, I think we hardly won a game for the year, which was sort of, yeah, it was, it was a weird feeling cause we played so well and we got to the prelim in 2018 and then just couldn't win a game in 29 and like we, yeah. had, we had so many injuries after the 2018 season we just there was like 20 of us training from like it was still after Christmas we had no one training for the preseason um so yeah but I think I've been pretty lucky I think I missed those yeah five or six years of Oh, so you came in on the ball. Oh, obviously, Clayton Oliver turns up. Things start to turn around. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, yeah, there's a, there's a good there's a good group of us, a good core of us, and yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. Hey guys, just a quick pause in this episode to compliment our partners of the show. You guys know that I've been sponsored and supported by Dabble, the gambling agency for a while now. This place has a special place in my heart because it is like the social network of gambling. You can follow superstars of the game, copy their bets. You might not know so much about a certain sport, but you can copy someone who does and increase your chances of winning some money. Um, obviously, if you're not a gambler, please only bet what you can and are willing to lose. Please dabble safely, gamble responsibly, as we always say. Just so you guys know, this year I've been taking over the streaming space at Dabble. Every Wednesday night from 7 to 8 p.m., Jake's Take is live. It is the wild, wild west of streaming. There's not too many sporting agencies or gambling agencies out there doing what we do. We put on a few bets throughout the show. We get some guests on. We have a lot of fun. It's all within the Dabble app. If you guys want to jump on board, the link is in the bio. Hey guys, this is a quick pause in this episode because a superstar is coming to town. I don't know if you've heard of a guy called Carmelo Anthony, potentially one of the greatest scorers of all time in NBA history. He is going to be going to one of the great cafes and institutions in Melbourne, Vanilla in Oakley. 
you guys have the opportunity to go buy a table, ruffle up some money with your friends and go and have a night with Carmelo Anthony. There will be a banquet feed. There will be signed shirts, jerseys, basketballs, whatever it may be, and you'll get the intricacy of talking to a living legend of the NBA, Carmelo Anthony. This is going to be happening. The link is going to be down in the bio, so get there, get your tables. They are going fast. It is going to be one of the all-time great events, and Carmelo Anthony is going to be in Oakley. How strange is that? This is going to be absolutely awesome. I'm going to be there. It'll be a massive night, so get your tickets now, and let's get back into the episode. You kind of touched on, I guess, some of the standards that were set early or some of the people that you'd spoke to, but particularly when you walk through those doors, everyone kind of had like a, it's probably two well, welcome to AFL moments I'll ask you, but just internally at the footy club, like those guys that you're like, like that's the AFL standard. Despite you having a great, great season and getting picked as a high draft pick, you come in, you see how blokes have been in the system for a while work. I mean, who were, who were some of those guys that you sort of looked at and you sort of took a little bit from is like that's that's a fucking elite level of performance that these guys have sort of set themselves for. Um, probably Nathan Jones. Was I Nathan think he Jones. won like two or three BNFs in a row and yeah. Jack Viney was like the – was Todd Viney's son. Yeah. And he was like the next captain in waiting. So he was, I think he was vice captain and Nathan Jones or Chunk was um, captain. And um, I think he had a bit of a welcome to football. I think was my first session sort of lined up in a, a ground ball and Nathan like pointed oh. at me, he says, come here. And I was like oh. – yeah, right. And like, yep, yeah, beautiful. Come with him. Wait in there. Ball hadn't even come out yet. Like, just an easy ground ball, 1v1 warm up. And Nathan Jones elbowed me in the throat. And he's ran off. I was like, <laughs> couldn't read. And then he just turned. And he's like, he's like he's, oh, he said something I won't say, but yeah, he said, Welcome to football. And I was like, Fuck me. Wow. Yeah. I was like, Did, did you do that on purpose? Yeah. I couldn't believe it. And then it was probably, I was, it was a pretty good, it was a pretty good moment. Um, we, I've, I've brought it up to him. A fair few times since. Does he even remember it? No, denies it. <laughs> yeah. Denies it. Isn't it funny how senior players, they just forget how the, the, the big impact they can have on kids, even yeah. though like, yeah, yeah. well, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It hurt though. Yeah. So he was, <laughs> I was holding back tears for about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, your second season, I think you averaged 30 in your second year. Well, actually, I mean, without sort of being too humble, because, I mean, you can if you want, but mm. what was it about your first two years that you were able to play at such a high level? Do you think individually? Because it usually, like, we're starting to see it a bit more common now mm. over the last, sort of last few years. But particularly yeah. when you came in, it wasn't like you hit the ground running, mm. and and very much before that, it was like you've got your initiation period to build up to be a player. But what was it that you felt like you were doing well, or the club was sort of doing with you that that was enabling you to play such a high standard those year one, year two? Uh, you, you won a rising star, didn't you? Was it your nomination? Or your nomination? No, I didn't win it. Callum Mills won that. Callum Mills won it. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, but my first year probably wasn't too great. It was probably pretty inconsistent, and that mm. just sort of frustrated me. And then probably that chat with Brendan McCartney and just having a – talking about Billy – like getting under Billy, Stretch, Billy Stretch's wing in, in a sense and well, she just did everything he did. And um, I think it just made it so easy, just being the most professional person mm. Monday to Friday and then on the weekend you just got to go out there and play. So it was, it was like in a sense it felt sort of easy because you've done all the right things. So sort it of ticked all the right boxes and you felt so good on the game day, it just sort of came out. Yeah. With with that though, obviously then comes attention. Um, <laughs> and like obviously people start actually wanting to watch you play and, and people are more interested in what you're doing every week as well. Like that would have been a <clears throat> a bit of a like almost like its own welcome welcome to AFL moment as well. Yeah. Like now you've got form on the field, all of a sudden you're all like the media attention is like Clayton Oliver's this, that and the other in regards to how good he can be. Mm. I mean, dealing with that and trying to stay level-headed as well. Yeah. Was that something you had to sort of get used to or were you always pretty good at just not giving a shit about that sort of stuff? Yeah, I've probably been pretty, always pretty good at not giving too much a shit about anything. So I take – what is it? I think you – nothing is ever as good as it seems or as bad as it seems. So yeah. You, you never have, get too high, never get too low. No. Nah, you have such a good game and sort of piss in your own pocket. You have such a bad game. Like, I don't know. Yeah. The media talk shit about you either way, so – I don't know you have. A, I just sort of try and keep everything the same. Like I if I play a good game, I don't change anything. I keep keep the same. If I have a bad game, I'd be like, oh fuck! Like I'm changing this. Like obviously you worked this week. Like right. Just sort of yeah. I don't know. Just sort of keep it pretty pretty level. Well, the, with um with that because that I find that interesting because some people I'm, I used to go the other way when I used to play terrible. I used to really live with it. Yeah. Oh no. Sorry. Yeah. It, it kills me. Yeah. Yeah. But I do. Like I thought that you might be like that as well. But do you do you live with it in the sense of you use it as fuel for for the next week or 
Oh. Like, I used to really sit on it and mull, like, it affected oh. who I was. Oh, yeah, affects – no, 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 it definitely affects the hell out of me. Yeah. But I'm saying more the fact that, like, my preparation – won't change. Yeah. Yeah, you keep oh, ticking God. boxes. Yeah, yeah. you play a bad game or you lose and you just sit there That's that <laughs> night trying to sleep. <laughs> I know, right? Sorry, oh, mate, I've had, mate, someone, yeah, my yeah. mates had to put up with me. I'm in a shock and move. I won't talk. Move. Yeah, I'm one of, my, my dad used to always have a go at me. He'd pick up the phone and call me. I used to give one word answers. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, mate, come on. And yeah. now, then when, funnily enough, when I quit or got out of the game, retired, yeah. he tapped me on the shoulder and said, you become a nicer guy. Yeah, because yeah, it does. You become like demonic on like performance. It's bad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it, it affects, is. Yeah, I think there's a lot of boys like that, and it's, that's probably one of the biggest learning things. Trying to cope with that. Yeah, and it is hard. Just the, that night after, or that night, <laughs> you're sitting there. You, you sort of want to get that first 24 hour period of like just. Yeah, it's, but it's, then you remember like life not too bad. Well, like, exactly what you said. Nothing's as as bad as it seems. Yeah. Nothing's as good as it seems. Right. So, um, and just to, just to go through those early years, was there anyone? Because you obviously had you obviously towed up a few games and towed up a few opponents, but was there anyone that gave you a good drubbing early doors? Where you're like fuck that, like any midfielders that that you went with early doors? I think that Bond gave me a bath on like my f- first year. Oh really? Genuine at the MCG gave me a bath, and I didn't really know at the time because as a young kid you're just sort of happy to be out there playing and getting a game. But Brendan McCartney, <laughs> no, <laughs> and he came and put put his arm around me. He goes, so that's uh. You get, yeah, it's a, you got pants today. <laughs> really? I was like, mate, I don't even think I played that much midfield, but I was like, I think he had like 30 and kicked two or three, which is just his usual game. Yeah, standard. So yeah. It's, it's not too much of a difference, but um, yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah. A few of them. Yeah, a few of them. Well, just, just a quick um, few words on Paul Ruse. Like coming into him, you've obviously been with Goody pretty much most of your time. But, yeah. Um, like I've, I've seen the clip of when he gave you – not for your first game, you sort of mentioned there, didn't pick you for your last game, but mm. a guy that sort of had such a, you know, a big stature in the game and won a premiership with Sydney and so forth. Mm. I mean, that what, what, what was he like as a coach at that point? Because that was a difficult period. I remember when he came in to almost like try and save the club in, in a sense. Mm. Um, yeah, he sort of um, was a catalyst to getting Goody there and getting him sort of all sorted and he got a lot of, a lot of the uh, – um, I think you've got Bernie Vince there and a lot of these players get the ball rolling. So the Melbourne Football Club is forever grateful for what he's done. Um, yeah, he sort of, yeah, he got the ball rolling. He'd be struggling. Probably wouldn't be a flag there, so. Yeah. Well, just to speak of that flag, like, I mean, I mean, it's pretty cool to say that you've won a premiership, yeah, I imagine. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty sick. Like that, like that, that above all the accolades you've, you've said, I mean, that must hang up, hang up quite high. But in the, in the year, in the year that it was, I mean, how do you look back on the strangeness of, you know, where you like winning in Perth, for example, it was obviously a, quite a quite a unique couple of years around COVID and so forth. How how did you guys manage to stay at such a high level throughout all of that? Probably helped us even more. Like we're just in that sort of like a little bubble. Yeah. Just, all we did was just train and hang out together. We put a lot of chemistry, and you know, we just sort of did everything together as a team. And there probably wasn't too many other distractions yeah. like outside. So we sort of all we did was yeah, trained. Extra, you'd go out there and have an extra shit with the boys, or you'd go out there and play basketball one on one, or yeah. a few, whatever it is. Where were you guys based? Where, where do, uh, did you move around a bit, or were you in, in the in 2020 or 2021? Well, both really. 2020, we were up in Queensland. So was that Sunshine Coast? Or was that like just because everyone was everywhere? I remember, I yeah. remember a few of the pipe. They they were in Sunshine Coast. Yeah, so. um, there's a few of the boys. Uh, sorry, there's a few places we went to. Twin Waters, I think, were for most of the time in right. um, 2020. But then in 2021, we're at uh, over in Perth for, like, the finals. Yeah. Like, I think we were there for, like, six weeks forever. But that was pretty sick. We had, like, literally just a whole resort to ourselves, And, yeah, just, just everything. There's a little golf course next door. And that, oh, so it's pretty, it's pretty shit for everyone back here. Yeah, like, I remember. Yeah. I remember, like, you guys were – it was almost this unfortunate thing. It's like, yeah, people back home in Melbourne are suffering, but yeah. – you guys are literally playing golf. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, it was pretty. But you can't brag about yeah, it because I it's like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, no, we definitely were bragging about it. We yeah. sort of, it sort well, of, wasn't your fault. It yeah. was just like, what are you going to do? We did, we did. We were, very, we were obviously very grateful for it all. Like yeah. to be able to do that and be able to still go play footy and, um, yeah, sort of live our life almost normal. Mm. Um, um, yeah, it was it was pretty sick. Though. Do you remember? Do you remember the game in itself? Because what I do remember is that. Um, it was quite neck and neck for like the first half, maybe mm. even going into parts of the third. Yeah. And then I was like a sliding doors moment. You guys just absolutely started dominating the midfield, uh, particularly you and um, 
you and track in regards yeah. to what you were doing. But is there is there any like notable things that you remember about the game that stand out to you? Gorney, Gorney getting thrown to the, the ground by Cub Daniels. That, that, that gets, <laughs> that gets, that gets talked about all the time. <laughs> Does it really? He brings it up all the time too. <laughs> Let's know about it. Um, but no, I think there's a play where Gorney hits it down to Harmsy and Harmsy kicks it to Fritter. And we still get the ball rolling um, and Fritter kicks his goal. And then we kick the next. What did he kick six as well or something? Fritter kicks six for Granny. That's, that's, it's, pretty, it's a pretty handy day. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very handy day, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and that was, I think that was the biggest moment. We just couldn't score for like so long. Yeah. And then it was just sort of like such an easy passage of play. It just sort of broke the whole game open. And then, yeah, sort of uh, the midfielders got going and we kicked a couple of goals and then sort of curtains, which was nice. Yeah, track had a, I think track, track was norm, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. he was a, had a blinder. Oh, that's a beauty. You got, it's always your midfield. There's always someone that can, any day, yeah. any given day, someone, someone can have such a big game. Um, just to go into to this season, because I want to I want to talk about from obviously what's more relevant and recent, but I mean just your point of view of like how would you describe it? Obviously, mm. you guys are such a talented footy club, and people expect so much of you, but it doesn't always go to plan. But in your eyes, I mean, building onto next year, how do how do you look back on this year? Um, yeah, we just sort of felt like everything that went wrong possibly went wrong. Not mm. not we don't like making excuses because there's obviously. Every team has things to go through and injuries and all that. And like Carl has so many injuries too. But sort of, sort of lost Gussie, who's such a, a key part of our, our whole team. Sort mm-hmm. of a missing piece. You put him anywhere and he just fixes the team. Um, and then obviously Track got injured, missed half the year. I was I played like a yeah, bit below that I should have. Um, so, yeah. Um, for, for, for when you say that though, like is, in your mind is – was it? Was there obviously you were dealing with niggles and stuff as well? So you you playing below what you may say is your as standard? Me. Yeah, yeah. It's just I, had, I obviously wasn't as good as I should have been. Yeah. Um, and then it's my hand was just yeah annoying as well. Just just not being able to stick a tackle. I've never missed more tackles in my life, which is, <laughs> which is just frustrating. Yeah, at the time, gee, it rode on me. I sit there night times after yeah. game, just thinking about all the tackles I miss and all the even just fun little things, and probably weighed on me a fair bit. I've never really had to deal with that any of those. Sort of like emotions, like in my just career. getting some of the basics and fundamentals yeah, out of it. Yeah, right. The basics of football, and it was just like so, I did Tommy Mitchell doing your hands, <laughs> yeah. like three, like all the time, all the time. And no matter how much more I did it, it still happened. Or so just having to put up with all those was yeah, sort of probably got got the best of me. Such a quality. Like I mean, can you just talk about your midfield? Mm. I mean, I know probably want to touch on your relationship with Gorney, but just like I know you probably definitely don't take for granted the, the quality of personality in your midfield and how your skill sets all complement each other. But mm. like going out with, you know, you know, Petrarca, Jack Viney, yourself, Max Gorn. I mean, there's, there's many other players I'm, I probably can name that I can't think yeah. of, but just that in itself, I mean, it's pretty formidable what you have there. Yeah, it's pretty handy. Pretty yeah. handy. Four. And, yeah, awesome. hand, handy four. Like, yeah. I mean, do you guys feel like, is there days where you feel invincible in a sense of like the quality you have? Yeah. Back yeah. in 2021 and 2022 and probably – a bit of 2023, there was just games where just all just all four was just firing. And it was just, it was pretty sick. And yeah. like, the defenders were pretty happy with it because they weren't getting, <laughs> having to do too much. I remember yeah. you'd always see Maisie and Jake Lever. And those defenders just, they were pretty, they were pretty well uh, rested at the end of a few games. And it was just such an easy game to play. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it would be nice to get back to that and get back to our best. Yeah. Um, just and do that again. I think that's what we we're going to try, try to do. And, um, I know Track's already gone away. He's, he's getting fit, and um, the boy's already back running. So how is how is his body? And I guess for, for you as a mate through that process, mm. obviously quite a scary thing for him. But I mean, how how was he through all, through all of that? It would have been quite a one. It would have been nice for him just to get away from footy at that time. But two, just like in in regards to his health, yeah, like the process of his recovery would have been quite tough. Yeah, he's had a he's had a pretty stiff run, run of it. Um, obviously, the what happened during the Collingwood game broke his. Broke his uh, rib. Splaining, yeah, but yeah. then, yeah. Yeah, then it happened. came out. Yeah. yeah, and then it was, we didn't really know too much about it. Then to find out that he'd actually ruptured his spleen and, or lacerated his spleen and done this and that and nearly died and had all these surgeries and it was, yeah, it was pretty full on the whole whole thing. We probably didn't hear too much about it. Um, it's pretty scary. Uh, I think he's had a bit of trauma to deal with and having to get over that just like mentally and his partner, Bella. Going through all that with him, mm. um, so I think it's just a, it's a fair bit weight on. It sort of takes you, 
perspective outside of football and just worrying about life. So yeah, um, he's had to come to terms with all that, and uh, he's back into it now. He's yeah, he's back training. He wants to wants to get the best out of his footy. He's obviously he missed a fair bit of the year, which is also fairly disappointing. But yeah, he's 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 come good now. He got the tick off uh, to run like two weeks ago. So oh, wow, fully back into it, and it, I think he's still have issues with his ribs and all that. I think he's still a bit sore. So <clears> we'll see how contact goes in in two months' time, but. There's a few of you coming back with a bit of a chip on your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. I know. I will. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, watch out for Melbourne, man. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, that's going to be, that, I mean, that's a that's a positive to come out of it just when you fall short, but you, yeah. you it kind of gives you fuel. Yeah. There's a few boys pretty keen to get back into it and, yeah, show show the rest of the competition what we, what we can do. Is there is there any sort of notable players, and I'll say there might be some obvious ones, but any sort of ones that maybe I, w- I wouldn't think of that, that you just love playing with? You love running out besides for, for what they bring or the value they bring or just for who they are, what they uh, stand for. Alex Newborn. Oh, Alex Newborn. I wouldn't have, have picked that one. Yeah, he's, he, I think he's everyone's favourite teammate. So Really? What What is it about him? I don't know. He's just everything. He's run so hard. He's always chasing someone. He's always laying out like an unbelievable tackle. He smothers someone and he's just always there just getting around the boys. He's going to be a huge, huge uh, void. He's, he's obviously left to – Going to Adelaide or Port, he's yeah, yeah. Had a little baby last year, so or this year, sorry. And um, him, he's him, and his partner from um, from Adelaide, so they've gone back home. Well, yep. want to go back home, which is pretty disappointing. Yeah. Um, we got Tommy Sparrow, he's another one, exactly the same, just workhorse and just does everything for the team. Yeah, um, little Kate Chandler, Kate Chandler, I love he's him, he's my boy. So yeah, <laughs> yeah um, just all the little fellows that do everything for the team. That is even Van Roy, and he's statistically for a young forward. Like people say, it takes time. Mm. He's statistically, mate, he's Maybe he's good. he's not. Yeah, he's he's do, he's already been doing well. Yeah, he I has. mean, yeah. yeah, he's quite a, quite a special kid by the look oh, of it. Oh yeah, he's a star. He works tremendously hard too. So love to see him have a, a really good year. He's yeah, I think he's only twenty one. So yeah, twenty one. Yeah, he's played like I think sixty odd games, but yeah. he kicked like kicked quite a few goals yeah, already as well. I don't know what we're always talking about. We need a key forward at Melbourne, but. Yeah, mean, it's right there. Yeah, literally. I think it's just right there in front of us. <laughs> I don't really you – know, he's not doing anything. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really get too much. Probably needs a bit more service from us midfielders, to be honest, if he yeah. – <laughs> if, if anything, I don't think it's his fault. No, it, was, it seems like a, they showed – they were comparing statistics with like some high draft picks, young forwards at his age, and he was like statistically right with the ones that they were sort of saying, you know, be the next yeah. sort of superstars of the game as, as a forward. No, he's gonna be super, he will be a superstar. Yeah. yeah. And is, how tall is he? Is he, is he, is he well, one, 196. So he's a big guy. Probably, yeah. Probably yeah, okay. yeah, he's huge. Yeah. He's just, he's just a big boy. Because he can play small as well is what I, what I noticed yeah, as well. Yeah, he's pretty clean by his legs. Yeah, mm. bloody oath. Mm. Um, going into Maxi Gorn, I know he's done a lot for you but and he's also done a lot for the footy club, but can you just talk about him and your relationship with him because I know you guys are pretty close and yeah. you spent a lot of time with him, probably most out of anyone at the footy club for, for a long part of the last few years. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean being Gorny, uh, very, we've always been very close since I've been to the club. Yeah. Um, but then it was all the stuff that happened the last year. Um, picked me up from training pretty much every day. Really? Drive me out to uh, – Drive us out to uh, Casey. Um, we got we got to know each other very well. Um, <laughs> spent a lot of time with George and Lou, Louis and, and Jess. So I'm sort of like the the third brother. He calls me <laughs> so, the, the third son of his. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Nah, I'll be forever grateful for everything he's done for me. Um, sort of welcome me back, open arms with everything that went on, and um, yeah, couldn't really ask much more from a captain and, and as a mate. So yeah, yeah. I was good to see you go seventh all Australian. He's just relentless, that guy, isn't he's he? Thirty, I don't even know how old, thirty-three or something. <laughs> yeah. he's getting really getting better, if anything. <laughs> yeah, he's living in those green jackets. Oh man, <laughs> he's just sleeping. Well, you in. both, you both, go, <laughs> he's sleeping. Are <laughs> hey, you actually always love playing chess against him too? Do we play chess? Yeah. What What is it about the game of chess that you you're like? Well, we were we were having a kick before the game, like maybe like round ten, and I was like, I'd I'd smoke you in chess. He goes, "There's absolutely no chance you get near me." <laughs> and I went out all guns blazing. You actually beat me. I was like, and he didn't realise it was going to be any good. And then I've, the score's like 4 2 now, 5 2. So I'm, I'm, back, in, I'm back in front by a mile. But we need yeah. to change a new, we need to get a new game for next year. Yeah. So we had a new, a new pre game. We need to find something. So it's, that's a pre game kind of thing. Yeah, pre game. Yeah, a little healthy fire before the yeah. game. You got, you, got, you got pretty grumpy there a few times. I was talking to Jess about it. And <laughs> he'd get up, walk out, and just have a little chat to Jess. Like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> 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 He's not too happy at all. <laughs> yeah. Like, Are you, uh, do you shit talk through the game? Oh, no, nah, nah, no, nah, not too horny. Not too horny. Nah, nah, nah. Okay. Yeah, Maybe you, was few, some, you know better. A few other ones, yeah. I'm not going to, nah, definitely not. Yeah. But, um, 
That's he, pretty cool though about him just like looking out for your off field. Yeah. Like that's uh, probably as a captain though, you don't really get those stories no. about that that type of leadership, which kind of goes on a lot in footy clubs. Mm. You kind of just see the more on field stuff. Yeah. Nah, he's um he's done above and beyond than he for, he does it for everyone though. He's um yeah, he's always doing something. I don't know how he has enough time for for anything to be honest. He's got two kids and his wife, he's got footy, put up with me for Twelve months. He's got like restaurants, or he's got to two restaurants. The, yeah, it's just and he does all this other stuff. He's always on radio. He's always. I don't even know how he does it. I don't know if he sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's just always. You see him everything. He's up at six a.m. He's doing this till then. He's boys want to get dinner with him. He's getting dinner with him. He's having meetings with this about this. So, um, what what in your eyes is his best attribute about a footy player? You see him up up close, and everyone sort of sees his skill sets. But the thing that, that you admire the most about him on field? On field? Yeah, but just about his actual skill set as a footy player. Oh, no, I've never seen really Ruckman do anything that he's, he can do. Yeah, because like, he kind of plays like kicks and moves and kicks yeah. goals, marks, gets forward. Like he does a lot. So I was just curious to know if there's anything to you that stands out about like his ability or is it really just the whole thing? The everything. Like he can follow up. He wins, obviously, taps at us. He's not doing that. He's following up. He's tackling. I think he had like the best tackle rate in the AFL. He, I've got fought up. And then he had, he was like number one contestant marks. For, he's probably done that for a couple of years. Yeah. And then he's kicking goals from 60 against Jeez. Geelong in the prelim. So he's, and he does that all the time. He's kicking bombs from everywhere. I've never seen Timmy Ruckman do that. <laughs> he's just, I don't know, he's just, he does pretty much everything. And you're like, I don't think you should be able to do that being 208 centimetres. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty incredible. Oh, mate. Love that. Um, I always thought I wasn't the easiest player to, to manage because I always had like, I always had to do sort of extra – like for me, for instance, I always had to run. Like mm. running was my thing. If I if I was at my fittest with my running capabilities, yeah. everything would take care of it on itself on its field. What what sort of some of those things that you you have to really focus on to get the maximum out of Clayton Oliver? Yeah, so just in, in during preseason, I just want to make sure I just try and get like every session. I want to be, be in every session and like give 100% every session. So just be as fit as possible. Like, yeah, you might be going back to the, what, the first to four years. Yeah, I think if you – yeah, I'll come back for one of those early sessions just to tick it off and get in front of the media. Yeah. yeah get it off my back. Yeah, nah, back. nah. <laughs> I think a few of the boys are pretty, are pretty keen to get back and we've talked about it. I think our breaks are going to be – our breaks a little bit longer anyway, not playing finals. So I'll get back and you've got to do your sessions anyway. So yeah, just get back and just get it done in the morning with the with the group and just do it Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, just sort of feel good for that. Yeah. But um, no, I think just, yeah, just, I'm probably the same, just be as fit as possible. Like, Running capacity. Yeah. I mean, how, much, how many Ks do, when you're going at your best in, in sort of in-game, what, what sort of, how many Ks are you roughly covering? Oh. Do you cover stupid amounts or are you smart, nah, or a smart runner? Not really stupid amounts, but like like Alex Newbull and Ed Langdon, they. they. Oh, yeah, Ed Langdon. They're stupid. Different. You're like 16, 17 Ks. Half so. marathons all yeah, this, aren't they? I don't even know how he's doing that. And he's riding his bike to the game and then back. <laughs> oh, my God. Alex Newbull is doing that. No, Ed Langdon. <laughs> oh, mate. He's riding his come bike. on. Yeah. Just get an Uber. <laughs> mate, I'm not right. After a game, I can't even walk. <laughs> Let alone ride a bloody bike. He's, he's, he's mental. Um, But yeah, I don't run, I put it too far. Like most of the boys are around the same, but it's probably just the way you feel. It's probably at the high speed. Yeah. It's sort of like just explosiveness from doing repeatedly, 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 really? Repeated, repeated sprints. Repeated, yeah. Yeah. Just that, a, just, what do they call that? Uh, uh, speed endurance or yeah. sprint endurance. Yeah. Just That's the hardest fitness, isn't it? Yeah. Like going 100, 100 kilometers an hour, or you're, you're 100% all the, all the time. Yeah. That's the hardest fitness, yeah. I feel. So like, just be able to do that and just like, yeah. Have the base be able to do that consistently all year, and that's just basically just doing as many sessions or doing all the all preseason, just taking everything off and just feeling the best you can. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got a few fun ones here for you. Um, well, this might not be a fun one, but this will be just interesting for me. Mm. Is toughest opponent you've ever had, um, or one whether it's a consistent sort of person that pops up, or just one specific game? Um, who who sort of when I when I say that question, who pops into the head? When I got when he got tagged a few times, Matt DeBoer was the worst Is ever. This GWS or Freo yeah. Matt DeBoer? Matt, GWS. Uh, GWS, yeah. yeah. And my God, he just abs like I can for like four years, three <laughs> years. He he tagged me every game and like I was having like and he had like I was having like thirty most weeks and then coming had like ten touches. Like 12 <laughs> touches. Oh wow. And like he do he's doing it to everyone every week and like it was just he was incredible. Like the yeah. way and the way he was so diligent about it. And, Obviously, wasn't too happy with it. Some of the things I'd, I'd say to him, and, um, but at the end of the day, it's sort of his job, and he done a bloody good job of it. Like, you admire it for yeah, yeah for what it is. 
But then Versa and like just on the other end are like Bont and the, the name are the main ones like Bont and Crip are just a, a few yeah. games where they're just they're unstoppable. I think Bont had a game against us this year and he was I think he had like thirty and two goals halfway through the third quarter. It was sort of like he was just untouchable. Yeah. I always talk about Bont. Um I was like, mate, you need to watch the guy live. Mm. Like it's it's quite amazing what like for his height and how he moves and what he does, mm. his skill set, it's fucking it's quite amazing. Probably yeah, people could say the same about track as well. Yeah. I mean, those kind of guys you see, you just like really sort of that T V doesn't do him justice. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Which is a fair sort of my my sort of summary of it. Uh best thing about being an AFL footballer. You've been one for ten years, so I feel like you should have a pretty good answer for this. Um I oh, know there's a fair, there's a fair few there's a fair few things. Um, like in your eyes, I mean, obviously, well, I I just think one thing that I think will always be hard for you, Claz, is when you finish your career, it's like to, not going out on the MCG every week. Yeah, like that. That's such a special thing that I don't know yeah. if you realise that at this moment in time. No, nah, I probably haven't as much. But, but like that is fucking cool, bro. It's the yeah. biggest stadium in the world. Almost you get to play in every week. Yeah. <laughs> you, get to, you get to go to train and like you go to work. I haven't had a job. I don't feel like yeah. I was about yeah. Like I don't think I've ever had a job. Most of the boys have been drafted when you're 18 or whatever. Like you put your boots on every day and play with your mates. Pretty cool. I know yeah. you whinge about a few things. Like I know we whinge about a, a fair few things and this and that. But I know you get to rock up on a Monday and you go out there run out in a footy a footy field mm. um, with your pretty much your best mates. Yeah, having a laugh all the time. There's like 44 of us, and then the coaches are sort of your mates too. And then you've got physios, trainers. You all get to have a laugh with and. I know the Melbourne Football Clubs. It gets a bad rap for its its culture and stuff, but you you go in there and you you sit next to um Disco Turner. He's like he's down that other end. He's a forty two, and then you sit next to Ben Brown, who was just there, like other end of the um the locker room or anywhere you sit next to. You walk and you have lunch, and it doesn't matter who you sit next to. Like you're having a good chat with him, having a good laugh with him, and that's that's pretty special. So all that shit that comes out. I mean, you guys just don't even like. I always have a laugh at it. Does yeah. that, they're not in there with us every yeah. week, so like it just it's a lot of shit. Well, it's also it's hard to believe because you a, a huge part of that group have been together for five years or more. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like, hard. It's uh, yeah. It, it just uh, like maths mathematically doesn't stack up. Right? No, it doesn't. Yeah. Um, we did touch on a welcome to AFL moment with Nathan Jones. Is there one in game like in those first two years? Fuck, probably went now versus Hawthorne. Actually, versus Jordan Lewis in my I think it was maybe our third year. We I was probably yeah my third year, and we versus Jordan Lewis. And yeah, just like some versus those Hawthorne players. It's not really a funny one, but just versus those Hawthorne players. Well, that the, when they had the three peat Hawthorne just after it, yeah, it was wow. just like after the first one, like yeah, that she like I think Buddy was out there, Hodge. Yeah, everyone was out there. I think everyone all the second or third year, and yeah, it was that was that was pretty like I was like fuck starstruck. Like, yeah, I was. Yeah, but then I was also having. I will also sort of like that young and sort of like the Hawthorne now was sort of up up and coming and. We'll, Making them run to finals and all that, <laughs> and they were on the way down. We probably were shit talking a little bit too much. I, I was going to say, were they doing that to you guys just to put you in your place at all? But were you guys going at them? We were beating them. <laughs> oh, so beating yeah, them. holy <laughs> shit! And then you started chirping them. Yeah, and we, and we just all. we shouldn't have. And it, like, it's like Jordan Lewis. I think Jordan Lewis is a, and a teammate the next year. I think maybe it was twenty seventeen. Must be twenty seventeen. Jordan Lewis came to us in twenty eighteen. I remember I was just shit talking Louis the whole game. And then he said something. He's just like, mate, you've been here for three years and, like, I've won four flags or something. And I was like. Oh, that's good. That's yeah, good math by him. Like, yeah, and I was like, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, well played. Dean Kent was getting into um, a little fair bit too and there was just a lot, a lot of words going around. And then next thing you're teammates. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> I, had a, a I had a – we had a, a, like a – I'm a sportsman night, like, end of the year. I was like, so is there one person you just don't like in the AFL? I was like, not really, but – Fuck God, if Jordan Lewis came to Melbourne. <laughs> like, I don't think he would like me. And I love Louis. Like, we'd get along yeah, really yeah. well. And I swear to God, like, after it was like two weeks later. He came, trade. Traded. <laughs> it was incredible. I was like, oh my God. We're going to bought Louis about 15 coffees and tried, <laughs> yeah. to, tried to make yeah. up for it. Louis, yeah. if you ever want a coffee, mate, let me know. What did you learn off him out of curiosity? Because, I mean, it, as you just said, you sort of spoke about his CV. Yeah. Is there anything that when he came in, you, you, you just thought stood out about him? Um, just consistency. Yeah. He's always very consistent with what he did. And when he rocked up really fit when he came to a club, like he probably wasn't the hardest worker or and all that, but he was very efficient with everything he'd done. And he was just like he looked after his body really well. I mean he's probably pretty old, so it was just yeah. You knew his game almost then, don't yeah. you? Are you getting to that point now with yourself? Like you know uh, are, you, are you still discovering that a little bit? No, I think 
I think the every year something's oh, – it just sort of changes. If, yeah. Yeah, you'd know. Like it's – Well, that's what I've just gone on. The, what, I'm, what impressed me about you is like you kind of, by the look of it, you've got – you set things that you know you're going to focus on. Also, just like you kind of try and break the mold a little bit yeah. and challenge yourself and change the things. Like the one-two movement is a great yeah. example of one point. Yeah. But that that I thought impressed me because I, I like that. I think you need to do that, don't yeah. you? You can't be you can't be too stuck in in one thing because every year something changes and you need to adapt and evolve so much. So yeah, just always trying to add something or take something away. Or it's it's not always more is is better. That's why I've been trying to figure out probably the, yeah. the biggest thing. Yeah, and, good point. Um, yeah, with that. Who was your idol growing up? One more uh, question after this. Who was your idol growing up? Michael Voss. Vossy? Vossy. Really? I was a Brisbane supporter. Oh, <laughs> yeah. really? Yeah. Um, Fuck me. Um, yeah. Those, yeah, probably mainly Vossy, like, tried to get his hair cut and I, get number th- I remember number three on all my jumpers. Oh, did you really? Yeah. There you go. So, yeah. I haven't heard Vossy much, but that, I mean, that's a no-brainer, really, when you think about yeah, it. He's a star. Um, well, this is just a podcast question we run with. So we test three qualities to – successful people in sport, business, whatever, mm. resilience, drive, or ambition. But you need all three, obviously. But is there anything we always kind of ask, I guess the cornerstone out of those three for you from year one to now that you've kind of relied upon to be, you know, have such a great career, have four all Australians or three best and fairest's, uh, resilience, drive, or ambition, which one has sort of been the key one for you that you've lent on? Oh, probably resilience. Yeah. Like it's pretty, I feel like it's, you, your drive's always there and your ambition's sort of always there, but it's it's pretty hard to – it's easy when it's gone good, but when a few things sort of – Fall out of place. Yeah, ruffle the feathers, if they say, whatever it is. And yeah. um, it's pretty hard to keep that drive there. Like it's – you need – like it is hard. For, some people don't have that, but I reckon it's – yeah, if you have resilience, you, you – you, you, Especially at your level. Yeah. I mean, like you get thrown around all the time. Yeah. Like with, with various things as a metaphor, by the way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Oh, mate. Well, I'm so glad we did this party. Thanks for coming on here. I think you're uh, mate. It's been. Um, I, I I I am a big fan of what you do, and I know you cop a lot of a lot of scrutiny and stick. But the way you keep going on the track and what you do, I, I admire above all. So, mate. Hopefully, the Melbourne fans enjoyed this one. Clayton Oliver, he's a superstar, mate. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me. No, Love appreciate, it. bro. Thanks, man. We'll see you guys next week.